What the hell is going on, people? This is Periodic, and you see the title of the video. We are jumping back into Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. We're jumping back into the 350 million global downloads reached celebration part one. But it's not really that important because today we're ranking every single summonable LR that has come out on global, including the brand new... AGL Full Power Frieza and Legendary Super Saiyan Goku. Hey, before we get into the video, I just want to give a shout out to this month's members. I appreciate all of you guys. And if you want to contribute to the channel, but you don't want to have to sign up for a monthly payment type of thing, you can go into any one of my videos, this one included, and scroll down here to the thanks button. This is actually really cool. You're able to contribute, leave a highlighted comment below, and have a nice little animation on the YouTube video. Or you can just watch, subscribe, and like. So, you guys know how this works, but in case this is your first time catching one of my tier list videos, I look at these characters from an overall perspective, whether it's how many teams can they be run on, how easily can they beat difficult content, uh, how good are they for, for players that are just starting out, how good are they, what's their height, on their best teams like what is their potential um i look at all these things and i put them all in tiers uh, i don't necessarily believe in rank one rank two rank three uh, i believe more in let's group them together in a similar uh strength and a similar power level i also don't really care about uh what order the unit is in on any specific tier so if you see one person ahead of another doesn't matter at all last but not least this is global you will not see any japan characters in fact if i scroll down here you can actually see jp or free to play so all the japan only and free to play characters are down there so without further ado let's start off at the bottom obviously that's how tier works tier lists work and then we work our way up to the top let's start at the bottom with the master roshi tier so you guys should already know uh, i mean by this <laughs> By this point in time, you already know the bottom four characters over on uh, Global Dokkan are pretty much units that have very, very little defense. You have the Vegeta, you have the Goten and Trunks, you have the Intelligence Gohan, and then you have the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Who The Super Saiyan 3 Goku is interesting because he can give himself defense on his 12 key, but unfortunately, he loses all of his attack on his 12 key. He needs his attack on his 18 key. But then he loses almost all of his defense on his 18 key. So in that regard, he's kind of a double-edged sword. But on the bottom tier, the Master Roshi tier, these units, not the greatest. Now keep in mind, on JP, Intelligence Gohan, and Majin Vegeta both have Extreme Z Awakenings. So they will be moving up very, very soon in a few months. All right, we're climbing up to the King Yema tier. And these units are a little bit better. They are definitely usable and uh, are pretty darn, you know, decent on the teams that they run on. Typically, you'll have characters of the same name that are better in some cases, but uh, these guys are still decent. So you have the Goku Black and Zamas, who's really good on long events because they can mini stack their defense uh, and build up their attack, but on short events, they get absolutely clobbered. You also have the uh, Physical Trunks, who can kind of do the same with that mini stacking defense. He's also got a 50% chance to crit, so he can actually get damage off. The Strength Beerus and Whis now... On their own team with certain units next to them, specifically other Beeruses, other Whis, other Vados, uh, they can actually look impressive. But the reason why I'm ranking them on the King Yama tier and not any higher is because it's not that many teams that they can look impressive. In fact, it's very few teams that they can look impressive. And so that limitation is what kind of sets them behind. You have the physical Bardock, who's kind of just a jack of all trades. He's a decent, you know, mid character. He's kind of like barely makes the mid mark. Um, and also he has a TUR that's better than him, the AGL one. Uh, Trunks and Mai is a unit that kind of a weird design because they're very heavy into 
stun, but not necessarily a good defensive unit. And that's kind of the combination you want going into something like Super Battle Road where stuns are going to work. You want a tanky unit that can stun. Uh, these guys aren't tanky at all, and they really can only do damage on certain teams, right? Uh, that's part of their passive condition. So a little wonky, just like the GT Trio. GT Trio works well within certain characters being alongside of them. Uh, unfortunately, they don't really fit on any, even on their own category, they don't fit particularly well. And their own category really needs free-to-play characters to round it out. And so that doesn't make it the strongest in the world. Uh, I think they'll be better down the road when they add more GT Hero cards. But for now, not the best. All right, we've ascended to the King Kai tier. And in that ascension is the Godhood Man himself. Uh, you know, strength, uh, strength intelligence, uh, God Goku, who is very mid let's be honest um his attack is okay his defense is okay his attack only really works if he's got you know the super saiyans and stuff like that whereas the pure saiyans i believe on his team um he's good for the first few turns but seven turns he's got a 50 percent chance to dodge and to crit but if he does get hit he gets hit really hard uh so that's kind of you know kind of holds him back uh, physical androids same deal their defense isn't particularly good it's only when uh 16 exchanges in that they can actually do good offense and defense i do like that they are support um at, you know during their first phase because that does make up um, uh, a bit of their shortcomings because their offense or defense isn't particularly great in the first phase. But uh, with that said, uh, if 16 was just a straight up exchange and stayed for the rest of the the you know match, then I'd probably rank them higher. But the fact that he's gone in three turns, kind of crappy. Physical Cell is good for AOE events and things of that nature. He links up really well with LR Intelligence Cell, his superior version. Um, but he's kind of, you know, lacking nowadays because um, his links and his passive only gives him so much defense. And of course, you're going to get into positions where he just takes way too much damage and very difficult content. Uh, you also have the LR Full Power Frieza, who kind of falls in the same, um, you know, umbrella there with taking way too much damage and way too many different types of events. Uh, he can do decent damage even when you have high health. Uh, he gets better when you get low health, but it's a catch-22. You don't want him to go low because he's, his defense sucks. And so if you go too low, you'll die. But you'd want him to go low because he gives himself more attack when you get lower. But then you have the chance of dying, which is a problem. Uh, you have movie uh, trio Broly there who, as I said before, if their name was Goku or Vegeta or Gohan, they could potentially be the best character in the game or like Rose Goku or something like that. Um, but unfortunately, because they are a trio, a Broly trio with, uh, you know, Lemo and uh, Chile, whatever the hell their names were, um, the links are god awful and the categories are god awful. But their passive skill is literally one of the most unique and coolest in the game. Uh, v Vegeta and Nappa. Now, uh, why do I rank them in the King Kai tier? Not higher, not lower. Um, Vegeta is amazing. Uh, Vegeta is really good in his exchanged form. Nappa sucks. Simple as that. Let's move on to the Grand Kai tier. We're now in the Grand Kai tier with uh, very top tier units. Uh, from here on out, all of these guys are top tier units. Um, just keep that in mind. We're starting off with Super Saiyan 4 Strength Vegeta. Fantastic active skill. Just wait four turns and you can do a ton of damage. Uh, great, you know, uh, super attacks, 18 key, massively raising attack and defense. Um, and then, of course, starting off with the 80% defense. Um, he's a little unique where he has to wait a few turns to build up his attack, but he is massively raising his attack on his 12 key, which is always nice. All in all, just a really solid unit. Same thing with the LR Intelligence Bojack. Um, some people are sleeping on this guy, but they really have to put him alongside of Strength Bojack. And then you're going to see a unit that's getting... 300k defense plus with uh, five to six million attack stats while buffing the rotation on his super attack he's giving extreme class allies 40 percent so i don't understand how you can rate that any lower than the grand kai tier the three-year anniversaries i'm actually going to put on par with the 40-year vegeta and the main reason is this number one they have the same passive skill where you get more key for the rainbow orbs but number two what i really like that they still do is on long events um, you know, their LR stats and their 120% attack and defense makes it so they're pretty tanky. 
They're pretty tanky because they have high stats uh, all the way around. And on top of that, on longer events, they can survive. And after six turns, if you drop below that 50% HP, they transform into still some really top tier transformation units. You have the Vegito, who's buffing uh, the allies when he super attacks and countering normal attacks with tremendous power. And then you have the Gogeta, who's, uh, you know, attacks effective against all types and lowering attack and defense on the enemy, which is really, really solid. Uh, next up is going to be the Golden Frieza and 17. Uh, the reason why they're not higher is simply because it does take them a while to get going. Like it does. They have to be in an event for a bit of time to get moving, get get active, get the blood flowing. Uh, once they're there, they're very, very strong, particularly with the right partners. Um, but on early events, they can get absolutely obliterated because their defense is really low. Uh, very similar to the Rose Goku Black, who if you put him in a position where he doesn't get a super attack off, he can get obliterated. His defense will be like 60, 70 K. Now, if he's super attacking, he's greatly raising that defense, 50% increase. So it becomes a lot better. Um, and he also does insane amounts of damage which kind of carries him up to the grand kai tier on top of that just being a rose goku black having unbelievable links sharing it with all the other goku blacks and zamasas and all those characters right uh lr tech broly is another man that's extremely offensive kind of like the rose goku black where doesn't really care about defense i mean at most he's getting what 100 percent defensive bonus but the multiple super attacks the insane insanely high attack stats is the reason why he's up here and you can kind of say the same thing for lr baby uh, lr baby um against half of the roster isn't anything special he'll be doing two million attack stats and just kind of calling it a day but when he is facing the pure saiyans when he's facing saiyans the man's attack gets so high when he's facing hybrid saiyans it's so high it's doing so much and he's got the mechanic of if you drop below i believe it's 40 percent hp he goes great ape which can definitely save you whether it's super battle road or gt legendary goku event or you know whatever it is that you're doing so definitely good there all right, we've climbed up to the Supreme Kai tier, starting first with the Goku and Frieza, the Blue Boys, as people like to call them. Uh, they're just really, really solid. Their defense is great when they're grabbing a bunch of orbs. Their attack is great as well. Um, their active skill is decent, but I'm not a huge fan of the negative aspect of it. Um, just, you know, they're all around, they're a great unit, uh, particularly if you have orb changers near them, then they really, really shine. And they're in a ton of different categories, so they're just pretty solid. Uh, you also have the LR AGL Gohan, who's like one of the kings of long events because he stacks defense on both his 12 and 18 key while giving himself 10% attack each turn, which is pretty insane. Um, his transformation condition, we've talked about it a million times, sucks. You'll probably never see it. Kalen Khalifla, still one of the best defensive units in the game, stacking attack and defense on both 12 and 18 key, uh, all, or stacking defense, I should say, on 12 and 18 key, also stacking dodge every time they attack up to 66%. They have 66% evasion, which is close to UI Goku's. <laughs> like, UI Goku's is 70%, guys. Uh, these girls get up to 66% while stacking defense, which is actually insane. And then if you build a team around them, they can actually do really good damage, right? Because they're super attacking so many times, and those super attacks could be anywhere from 2 to 4 million. So in, in reality, they're doing anywhere from 4 to 10 million attack, right? It's pretty crazy. Uh, you also have the uh, 17... Uh, do or not duo but the 17 group the universe 7 and 17 um, this dude's really good particularly on representative universe 7 but that's the reason why he's not better on representative universe 7 he's so strong He's very tanky. He does insane amounts of damage and his active skill is absolutely incredible If he's not on universe 7, he's pretty mid and you can say the same thing for super 17 Super 17 on an Android slash target Goku category has unbelievable amounts of defense, has crazy abilities, great attack. But if you don't put him on that category, then he is the king of mids. Uh, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, though, you can't really say that about him. Uh, again, four turn active skills, great, just like uh, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. The reason why I actually put him a tier above is two things. Number one, uh, I do like that he get, gives himself defense on his 12 key super attack. It's a massively raising uh, 100% increase on his 12 key super attack. 
and he's got a better leader skill. Go Goku's family is better than Vegeta's family. And then last but not least on this tier, you have Spirit Bomb Goku, the AGL one. People still sleep on this guy. He does so much damage. It doesn't matter if it's turn one, turn 10, turn 50. It doesn't matter. He gives himself pretty darn good defense if he's grabbing a ton of orbs. And his conditions isn't hard to hit. You need Super Saiyans on the turn? Yeah, that's fine. There's like 10 million Super Saiyans in the game, so you'll be good with that. We've gotten to the Beerus tier and we're starting off with tech super saiyan 2 gohan who just does unbelievable amounts of damage and has one of the best active skills slash end part of his passive skill combos in the game where he does one of the greatest nuking attacks in the game absolutely ridiculous his links are a little wonky but um, he does grab a ton of key uh, because of his passive and he also grabs a ton of defense because of his passive so he's just all around a fantastic unit uh, lr tapion and minosha um, people just sleep on his support skill he is literally like the super version of lr turles now i will say that lr turles is better because he can link with more people and um, Tapion and Minosha doesn't really have that many good linking partners. But with that said, still extremely good. Gets pretty tanky and does decent damage on top of that. The five-year anniversary units on, are on here. Um, great, great, great characters on long events. They still output so much damage. It's absolutely insane. Plus, their link set is godly. Uh, and their active skills are really good, too. Uh, you have LR Intelligence Cell, who... For the cell units, I mean, my god, this guy is so strong, particularly against a lot of people. And you have that free get out of jail free card. If you somehow drop below 30% HP, he kind of has like, I don't know, I don't, would you even say that that skill, I would say his skill is better than revival because like how often do you drop below 30% HP and you just like maybe don't have items or you don't want to use items and then cells passive kicks in or his transformation kicks in, and then you transform and get all your HP back. Whereas with, like, the LRUI Goku or the Int Vegeta, bro, I, maybe I've seen their arrival once, and I've been spam using them like crazy. It's it's insane. Uh, the physical Majin Vegeta is here because of, similar to the Tech Gohan, just does so much damage. And, of course, if you're bringing that Majin Buu Saga Goku, like Strength Vegito, the Goku and Vegeta, then his damage is through the roof. Plus, as long as you're not putting him in the first spot... If you put him in second or third, his defense is really solid because he gains the uh, defense after he super attacks. So he becomes really, really tanky depending on the orbs that he gets. And then, of course, you have uh, Gohan and Goten who people be downplaying. But, bro, I'm telling you, they get their, their passive skill so fast because they have to build up their attack and defense. They have to build up their key. Well, then they give themselves a part of the passive that makes them attack multiple times per turn to quickly facilitate that. So a lot of people say like, oh, on short events, they're bad. No, they're not. Have them attack once and they're fine. <laughs> they're fine when they come back around. Their defense is already almost 200K, if not above that. So they are spectacular. Plus, they're still one of the most offensive oriented characters in the game, meaning they can put out so much damage so quickly. Uh, they are near the top in that regard. It's pretty insane. All right, we're almost done, guys. Whis tier. We're starting off with LR Boot Tanks. Um, his leader skill is very limited because there's not a huge amount of Majin power or uh, power absorption characters, but he makes up for it for everything else that he does, right? Uh, stacking defense on his 18 key, stacking attack on his 12 key, giving himself so much key just for grabbing normal type orbs, uh, just being able to be extremely extremely tanky extremely offensive oriented and his transformation condition is not particularly difficult and it gives you that five uh turns of extra key plus sealing the enemy super tech which is really really awesome and then there he's great you know doing the raising the attack and just doing so much damage so awesome awesome card absolutely love that physical boot tanks also love this lr turtles like i said uh, i prefer him over the uh, tapion minosha because he can uh, link up better with multiple people but just all in all man this dude like does great offense if he's getting that 12 24 key um super attacks then good god it's insane and then of course after eight turns he can give himself 24 key twice using his active skill which is insane as well and then the defense is just off the charts then you have the strength ui goku who is incredible still to this day seven turns of uh 70 percent 
dodge while stacking attack and defense when he dodges while eliminating guard on the super attack uh while having one of the best link sets in the game ridiculous uh lr jiren also ridiculous an lr with lr stats with 200 percent attack and defense <laughs> Uh, that's uh that's pretty good with the amount of crit that he does and everything else um it's very very strong what that lr jared is able to do he's just he really is like one of those characters where like i don't really need anybody i'm just gonna bulldoze through things i am the juggernaut and you're paper mache that's what jiren is and that's what strength broly is as well strength broly just the sheer amount of damage that he puts out with the multiple super attacks and aoe super attacks is fantastic now the only critique i have with broly is if you put him in the first slot he's sitting with very little defense so he can get ab absolutely torn apart but after he gets his super attacks off no issues no issues and you can actually say the same thing for lr goku frieza hence why they're on this turn uh, of course we're mentioned we're, we have to mention that they're the extreme z awakened versions because goku frieza dude when they super attack their defense skyrockets now again if they don't get to do that if they don't get to attack before they uh, get hit then they will get hit extremely hard extremely hard the two of them but after they super attack they're in the two 300k defense range and they just are are, are, are little gods it's it's awesome to see we've made it up to the grand priest tier and here we have the two brand new lrs uh, super saiyan goku and full power frieza i do believe that they belong on the same tier they're kind of mirror images of each other where goku is potentially better on longer events because he's gaining his defense on his 12 key and frieza is better on shorter events because he's starting off with 200 percent attack and defense they kind of um have better features than each other because then you can also say okay goku's better on those longer events but frieza also has more enemies that he can crit against in the gokus and more enemies that he can get additional buffs with when he's facing super class um but with that said as well uh, a lot of boss enemies are extreme and so goku can activate that part of his passive so both of them have uh really amazing kits and are so darn good and speaking about so darn good you have the strength vegeto here as well the goku vegeta because they just have everything it's like six different developers were creating one character or they were creating each character and then like koto-chan just came over and she said i want all of you guys to give me all your ideas we're going to turn it into one character i mean you're talking about damage reduction you're talking about additional attacks you're talking about crits you're talking about the capability of foreseeing super attacks i mean just don't get me started but do get me started on Intelligence Vegeta because I think people underestimate his damage reduction. They just see that 10% and they're like, oh, that's nothing. But the fact that his defense is so high to begin with, and don't forget it stacks up to 30%, which is solid. But on top of that, oh my goodness, that ability to get those crits off is ridiculous. And that is why Lone at the top. is LR AGL Ultra Instinct Goku mastered. The man is untouchable. Uh, just a static, just a constant, just a forever 70% dodge is ridiculous. Uh, on top of that, he can get up to like 200k defense, which is great in pretty much all events. On top of that, he has the same mechanic as Vegeta with the <laughs> every additional is crit every addition every super attack additional is crit and his main super attack has a 50 percent chance to be crit as well just ridiculous uh ridiculous he's got 30 percent built-in additional what Th that's a 55 percent card that without even putting hidden potential into him has 50 percent crit 30 percent additional that doesn't make sense that shouldn't be allowed all right with 70 percent dodge how does that make sense that sounds like a cheat card that someone who just started the game and wants to bypass all content would make all right plus one of the best link sets in the game plus on some of the best categories in the game agl ultra instinct mastered goku stands at the top with that said i'd love to hear your opinion about it drop it in the comments down below you're probably you're probably already fiercely typing away 
little Timmy, little Jimmy, little Tammy, little Pammy. That's fine. I want you to come with the smoke. I want you to come with the well thought out comments. None of that, oh, this guy's better. And then that's it. None of that, you're dumb. None of that, you know, oh, this Dokkan tuber said that this person is better. I don't care. All right? Don't bring that foolishness to Periodic's house. I want you to actually out-argue me, baby. If you got the ability to, if you got the guts, and I don't think you do. One thing that I do know you can do is follow the channel. You can do so by clicking that blue join button. Become a boomer champion like Joe V or gently rub that sub button, gingerly ring that bell button, lovingly kiss the like button. As always, it's periodic. See y'all in the next video.